Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Ruslan Mursazade, and I will be your host today. Um, I have the honor of hosting some of the product marketing leaders from technology space today. And we're going to talk a little bit about the synergy between product marketing and product management uh, in technology companies. Uh, obviously, both of these roles are extremely important, and them working together is oftentimes crucial for organization success. So we'll discuss what kind of strategies everyone is um, adopting or experienced to be able to drive this synergy. Before I get started, I'd love to um, ask our panelists to introduce themselves. Um, Emma, would you like to get started? Yeah, sure. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Emma. I'm a PMM at Spotify. I've been at Spotify for a little over two years. And before that, I was at um, AWS doing product marketing as well. Outstanding. Daniel, would you like to go next? Sure. Um, so hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Daniele. I'm the Global Product Marketing Director for N26. For those that don't know N26, um, one of the first challenger banks in Europe. Um, I oversee all of our core markets uh, being the main European countries. Um, before this long career within the financial services industry, it was within product marketing. So happy to be here. Great. Aitan, would you like to go next? Great. Hi, everyone. Uh, good morning. I'm Aitan. Um, I think I'm the only product manager on the panel. The rest are PMM, so it'll be fun to see how we answered questions from different perspectives. I was at Google for 15 years, uh, worked for a decade in ads, a variety of uh, internal areas, ML and so on. Started my career as a software developer, business school, startup, PM, um, and uh, excited to be here. I was part of the wave of layoffs uh, almost exactly a year ago uh, this month and was excited to embark on a new journey. Thanks for having us. Great to have you. We'll be nice to you, all the PMMs here. Um, and then last but not the least, uh, we've got Irina. Hi, everyone. I'm Irina. I'm former product marketing manager at Meta. Before that, I was working in consumer goods industry and product and also product marketing at L'Oreal and Avon. And now I'm leading product and marketing consultancy. And excited to be here. Great. Thank you all for being here, um, our great panelists. Um, obviously, what we know that the product management and product marketing roles are crucial to organization success. Oftentimes, product marketing um, acts as the voice of the customer and drives messaging, positioning, while the product manager um, owns the roadmap as well as the product development. So I'd like to get started by talking a little bit about how you define the relationship uh, between product management and product marketing and what is crucial for success of these two roles working together. Uh, maybe, Emma, we could start with you on that question. Um, yeah, I'd love to answer the question. So I think to me, the most important thing to understand when sort of defining the PM, PMM relationship is understanding that there's a shared goal and a shared mission. And that's ultimately just to make the product as successful as possible. So a lot of times um, I work with PMs that maybe have never worked with PMMs before. And sort of what I tell them that my my job is to make their product successful and um, to do everything in my power to make sure that they're successful generally. So I think starting off the relationship just by defining that shared mission and shared objective and then um, working to bring insight to the PM so that they can um, put together the best roadmap and, and product strategy possible. Great. Eitan, we'd love to also get your take on this as a product manager. What's your, been your experience? Yeah, no, it's a great question, and I love Emma's answer. Um, I'll say something similar, just um, from a, a, a slightly different lens. Um, so generally speaking, I think it's you can answer the question the same way, regardless of which relationships is a you know, PMM and UX and PGM and ENG and, you know, PM and all of them. Uh, and so to drive a successful business, and this is a bit, my answer is a bit skewed to B2B, but uh, you can see the same in B2C where you want to have a sales strategy, a marketing strategy, a services strategy, a product strategy, an overall business plan uh, that's working hand in hand lockstep. And so the partnership is very much aligning on a shared vision and mission and goal, as Emma was saying, everybody's trying to achieve the same thing. And 
um, everybody has certain assets and skill sets they can bring into that goal. Um, I think what's interesting and unique about a PM, and I don't know if this is a shared view of everybody sees this, but it's sort of you're intentionally sort of um, leading the cross-functional team. And so um, you need to be really good yourself at meeting with customers, pitching the product, understanding their needs, um, thinking about how to position, overcome competitive, you know, uh, customer objections and all of these things. Um, and you need to make sure everything is there and in place. So you're absolutely accountable to make sure there is a marketing plan and strategy and a sales plan and strategy, but you're not building it yourself. Just like you're not building the engineering plan, uh, you're relying on those partners to do that. And you typically aren't overseeing those people from a reporting structure. So it's really all about relationship and having like excited partnership and uh, shared goals and, and collaborating and doing it together. That's a great word to put it, um, especially in larger organizations. Oftentimes uh, folks like engineers aren't reporting up to you at PM. So influencing, inspiring and leading has becomes a, a key part of it. And um, Irina, maybe you could talk a little bit about some of the uh, the differences that you've seen in these roles and how you've been able to overcome those differences. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think the roles of the product marketing managers very much depend on which team you are at. And obviously your connection to the PM and to the market would be slightly different depending on which team you are at. For example, at Meta, I worked in the integrity and safety team. And I was very much focused on the, you know, focusing on the real reliability of the products, uh, finding some vulnerabilities of the projects. Therefore, my technical communication with the PM was very, very close and with engineering teams. While my colleagues who were very focused on the B2C side of the products, they would be focusing on the user experiences. Therefore, their challenges were mostly focusing with um, uh, their markets uh, feedbacks and their customers reviews. Therefore, you always have a slightly different uh, challenges depending on uh, which team you are. Definitely, and it depends on the organization as well, how they've structured their teams. Um, uh, Daniela, maybe you could talk a little bit about how, we, but based on your experience, how you've seen the PMM role and uh, potential how it has been different in different organizations based on your experience. Absolutely. No, that's a great, um, great segue. So I think a, it depends on um, where the product marketing team sits because it really, it really differs from company to company. Sometimes it's in the growth organization, marketing organization, sometimes it's in the product organization itself. Um, and of course, on the, on, on the business model, if it's a B2C, B2B, to c or, or B2B. So obviously there's different flavors to, to product marketing. I think in my experience, uh, let me use my most recent. So in 26, and, uh, product marketing is sitting within the growth organization. And I think the, the advantage of that is to be able, obviously, to sit on a fence because on a daily basis, you're working with the product team and you're working of all the nice things that my colleagues have just explained, right? So you're working with the engineering, you're working to make sure that we have a shared vision and goal. We're working on the PL, we're looking we're sharing the insights, but then on this other side, we're actually working with the marketing channels, right? And so that is an advantage of sitting within the marketing team. And I think the, the, the most important piece that we are able to do in N26 is the fact that we're sitting in the marketing team, like maybe most organizations, is the timing of a launch, looking at go-to-market strategy, right? So to really have that balance between when a product is actually going to be ready for launch <clears throat> and involving the channels while they're doing other things as well, right? I always find that the most crucial and the most complex piece because you want to brief them, you want to give them information, you want to give them more creative time to think of what is the best um, uh, campaign platform to, to use for a specific product launch. But then in the meantime, in the back, you have the product that is being developed, but it could like move uh, and, and so you don't want to brief them and or it might change in the value proposition because there's especially within fintech things are moving quite fast so these are some of the elements and in other organizations maybe within a b2b2c in my experience you have to work closely with a sales team you have to work closely with a commercial team and so keep i think the, the common denominator across all organizations is that product marketing is at the center of many 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 stakeholders and that creates uh, an embedded responsibility for for PMMs, right? And uh, and I think building relationships is one of the key aspects for for PMM. 
Absolutely. There's this um, myth that uh, product management owns putting products on the shelf and product marketing owns taking them off the shelf. But that's very much a myth. Like you said, product marketing needs to be involved across the entire journey and product development cycle so they can uh, provide, provide that customer input, that customer voice throughout the journey of the product uh, all the way to the launch. Um, what I would like to talk a little bit about are maybe some of the specifics um, based on your experience of what product management owns and what product marketing owns. Um, Emma, could you talk a little bit about some of your past experience and what are the key components that you've owned um, in the past at Spotify or at Ma uh, AWS that uh, maybe are um, sometimes uh, subjective and organizational? Yeah, um, I think I think there's a ton of overlap, right, in, in PM and PMM sort of roles and responsibilities. And I think you particularly see that around anything that like involves the customer. Um, so customer research is often sort of shared just to kind of set the foundation of how much overlap there is. In terms of um, specific things that I would own versus a PM, it's um, yeah, coming up with that marketing strategy. So what is the end to end marketing strategy that's driving product success? However, you know, the PM and PMM define it, whether that's growth in users, growth in revenue. Um, so that would look like, you know, are we doing an inbound or outbound strategy? What are the specific tactics that we're deploying? Um, so that sort of like uh, typical kind of like marketing is really um, owned by marketing specifically. Um, I think a lot of other type of like marketing deliverables that um, maybe PMM leads and PM consults on would be like, you know, what's the product narrative? Um, that's something that, you know, I would typically write up and then ask for the PM to consult on and for engineers to consult on as well, since they're the people building the product. Um, yeah, so that's kind of like my high level answer. There's, I feel like there's so much overlap and often, you know, things are really collaborated on um, equally as opposed to um, owned solely. Um, but yeah, that's that. That's a good take. And that's a good segue to maybe some of the challenges. If there's overlap, there's a lot of challenges you too. Um, I'm gonna pass this hard question to you, Aten, uh, to see based on your experience, what type of challenges you see in the collaboration and the synergy. Great. Actually, if I may, I'm going to try to give an extra lens on the last two questions in a, in a related way and then segue into this. So something I've seen over the years, um, there are cultural differences across companies, Apple, Microsoft, Google, uh, Meta, I know a bit less, AWS. Um, and so like the biggest contrast I remember hearing years ago was that at, at Microsoft, PMMs were responsible for pricing. Uh, customer facing, you know, inbound and outbound, and then PMs just built the stuff, um, which I found, which was not my experience. And my experience at DoubleClick and then ads at Google, um, it, so it comes down to company differences. And then uh, for very large companies, like how Google ads operates versus Google cloud operates is different. And then specific teams, depending on the resourcing they have might be quite different. In my experience, both at DoubleClick originally and then at Google, the PMMs were shared. There's a group of PMMs who sort of covered a wide range of products and kind of jumped, went in and out as needed. Um, but structurally, while structurally PMs were um, fixed, it was, you know, the PM and the end team were responsible for a given product, which meant the time spent, the availability uh, was just simply different. And so, um, it was more of a, as a PM, you spent time with the customers and all of that stuff, developed insights and knowledge, then conveyed that to the PMM, and then they helped craft uh, the plan from there. There are other places I've seen where it's the exact opposite, and PMMs are, are much more in front of customers and the market and a competitive research and all that stuff, and PMs are much more the, okay, you're sharing all this information with me and I'm translating it. Um, into a product strategy and roadmap. And so uh, for folks on the call, as you're thinking about your future career and where you want to be, there's sort of a wide range of, here's all the range of experiences and skills you might uh, have and apply. Which of them do you most want to, most enjoy? Which of them do you most want to build on? And based on that, which company, sub org, team do you want to be on? And 
ask the questions to understand uh, ultimately what's different there. Um, from a challenges perspective, I think the, as I'm saying this, thinking out loud, uh, I think the primary challenge was when it was a horizontal. I don't think I've ever had a, a relationship challenge of like, oh, we're stepping on toes or whatever. Most teams are so stretched. Nobody has enough time. Oh my God, please, if you have time to go do competitive research, thank you. If you have time to go speak with three extra customers I couldn't get to, oh my God, yes. Um, more often though, my experience has been more uh, um, with a shared horizontal team, whether it's UX or PMM or some other functions. And so the challenge is that they don't, um have as much context for you know all the various levels of elements um and so you spend a lot of time yourself uh as a pm thinking through um, the bullet points of uh usp unique sales proposition and value prompt and all of these things so i think that's sort of which it goes again it's sort of any any team sometimes you're missing a ux you're short on ux sometimes you're short on pm and there is no pm and so you just sort of have to roll with it depending on your team makeup and resources available. 100%. That's when the prioritization challenge comes in where maybe PM has different priorities than the PMM. And so the resource uh, challenges always become a key driver of those um, issues. Um, Irina, maybe you could give us the perspective, your perspective as a PMM in terms of what types of challenges you face and um, how you've been able to overcome those challenges and your collaboration with PMs? Yeah, I think um, I would um, a little bit elaborate on uh, on the previous points. Um, I never had like um, any relationship challenge. However, I did have a um, challenge with a resource, especially when you are shared PMM and you're working across multiple teams, um, across multiple priorities, and every PM is obviously expecting you to prioritize them. Therefore, um, in this case, you need to see a larger picture, uh, what, which kind of uh, challenge you would like to take and where you can support the team. And therefore, how you can actually collaborate your, with your ex fans like UXRs, for example, or like designers to support you on this journey and maybe divide and conquer. So I guess resource was the, the key challenge. And obviously, you need to continue, um, you know, support your relationships uh, with all the P PMs you're working with. Therefore, it's kind of a little bit tri tricky sometimes. Uh, however, if you have a strong supporting structure um, within the UXRs or like fellow PMMs, you would be able to succeed. Those are great points. Um, I think one of the challenges that I've experienced also is communication challenges, where um, there's not a clear communication or roadmap or framework in terms of how PM and PMM should work. Um, Daniela, maybe you could talk a little bit about how you've been able to overcome those communication challenges and overall, how do you communicate with PMs in terms of messaging, positioning, uh, product launches, et cetera? I think I'm touching upon the relationship piece, uh, it, it is fundamental, right? In a sense that what we tend to do with the, the product team, so N26 is one of those companies, going back to what Aiton was saying, is that we are the ones that does the competitive analysis and brings the insights. We are the ones talking to the customers. And so then we bring that to, to the PMs. And they're super happy about that because they don't have the time anyway. So in, in that piece, or maybe what they focus more is in the UX research, right? So they do a lot more on that side. But to going back to your question, I think what is really key is that we start any sort of discussion from a roadmap and what's coming really, really early on. And, and so I think another topic that can come up is a divide and conquer. Uh, situation where we, we we sit down together, they know what our expertise is, and as, as Emma was saying, there is overlap, but we, we, we sit down and we make sure that A, there is an ongoing sync between a, a well-defined team, so we, we, we outline roles and responsibilities from the beginning, uh, I mean, it's, it's without saying is that PM does product and we do product marketing, we will take it to market and we'll make sure that we have product adoption once it's launched. But I think ongoing circles, ongoing communication, um, uh, offsite discussions around what makes sense and what doesn't. And I think we try to do things called um, GSTDs, which is getting uh, um, GSTDs, getting stuff done days, right? So we're, we, we, we isolate completely from, from meetings and, and we sit down and we just focus on the launch of something or what we're going to do over the next three to six months. 
once that plan is outlined, then um, we, we know exactly what's happening. Obviously, things can pivot, things can, can change, strategy change changes. Um, but overall, I think that's the key to communication, right? And again, I, I'm, I'm stressing the relationship piece because if something happens, then either the PM or PMM will cover for the other person. And that's the sort of things that tends to happen. But as you know, says, sometimes, especially when you have the shared uh, so my, my team is structured by vertical, right? By by sort of products. So we have a PMM that is mirrored to every single segment within product. And so you have a one-to-one -one relationship. But I make sure that that circles, that moves. And so one PMM is not always going to look after one segment. They will look after another segment at some point in time. So there is a wider relationship building and everybody knows everyone. And so that's how we cover and make sure that capacity is managed. That's great. I love the idea of getting uh, things done, days. Um, Daniela, I, I think wanna... you've convinced most of the viewers that they want to join your team. It sounds so good. <laughs> it's not all that. <laughs> it's not always that great, right? There's always challenges, of course, and there's frustration like any team, but we, we try to improve as much as we can. Absolutely. I want to double down on maybe talking a little bit about specific moments in product journey or uh, specific times that PM and PMM should collaborate more. And maybe Emma, um, I'd like to ask you this question. You could, you've also, you worked on the consumer side of things at Spotify and then the business side of things at AWS. Maybe you can bring in that perspective and say, how have these been different based on your experience in terms of how the PMs and PMMs collaborate? Um, great question. I think generally like I think the fundamentals don't really change that much. Um, you know, it, when you're a PMM, for example, regardless on the product that you're working on, the foundation of your role is pretty much the same. You are supposed to build product narratives. You're supposed to have a, uh, a deep understanding of the user and have sort of like an empathetic lens and understand their pain points and what sort of like moves the needle from their perspective. And then you're supposed to like sell the product or market it really effectively. Um, the tactics change though. So the tactics and the end-to-end -end marketing strategy and like the core deliverables that you're working on change. So if you're working um, on B2B, you know, you'll be working on like a lot of like sales collateral and making sure that your sales pitch is really, really smooth and ironed out. Um, if you're working on, you know, just targeting a specific end user and they have the purchasing power on their own, maybe you're looking at um, more social, maybe you're looking at like Reddit or, or paid ads or something like that. So the tactics um, change quite a bit. So I think that's generally some of like the differences that I've noticed in PMM. Um, was there another part of your question that I'm leaving out? Um, I Maybe uh, what stages of the product launch or um, programs should they collaborate more or maybe mm. less? Yeah, be involved. Um, any thoughts on that? Um, yeah, so I think when coming up with the product launch, it's like um, getting together with the with the product with the PM and just understanding like what's going on. Um, so generally, like I like to get a really like firm lay of the land and talk with the PM and talk with engineers to understand like what the product is and how it's differentiated from their point of view. And like, I, I actually really love talking to engineers in this aspect because they're building the product. So they like are excited about, you know, what makes it really special. So I think that layer of collaboration where I'm in the learning phase is really, really important. Once I've kind of like had that learning phase, then I kind of go off and, and do my own thing where I come up with, you know, the general marketing strategy. And that's when I come back to the team, to the product development team, kind of ask for their advice, make sure that they're aligned. And then when coming up with the deliverables, um, mostly I'm just like in an execution um, standpoint, but there are key areas where I want the PM's um, help and collaboration. So an area that I already talked about is like product narrative. I wanna make sure that the PM is bought into what I'm selling and like what the value props are that I'm mentioning. Um, any type of like part of the user journey where maybe we're talking about like how a user finds the product on the website and what that discovery process looks like all the way through getting access to the product. I think that um, we talked about this before, but that is like a critical part in the user journey that affects product usage. And so that's a key area of um, PM and PMM overlap. Um, so those are kind of the core areas that I see overlap between PM and PMM with product launches. 
Yeah, you brought up some really good points. Oftentimes, the engineers, the product managers that are working in the product, they're the most passionate about it. They uh, they do the research and they really spend a lot of time with it. So getting their perspective is extremely important, similar to getting the sales team's perspective, um, similar to getting um, you know the analysts and market feedback, essentially. So you brought up some really good points. Um, I want to switch gears into some positive thinking in terms of maybe, Eitan, you can tell us um, one story, one success story of where you worked with a PMM and it really resulted in great outcomes. Awesome, would love to. So uh, I'm going to add one extra element to the last question, if I may, just because I, I think Absolutely. actually it's, a, it's kind of rare uh, and so it might be helpful. So back in the day at DoubleClick, this is like eight, 15, 18 years ago, we put a lot of rigor into a new, what we called commercialization process. Um, it used to be that you'd build a bunch of product, throw it over the wall and sales services, marketing would figure it out and it would just work. And then that started failing. And so double click, put more rigor into a, a thoughtful structured commercialization process. And I mentioned this at double click cause at Google, it was much more ad hoc, uh, shoot from the hip kind of processes, but we would. We came up with this classification of a commercialization level one, two, or three, C1, C2, C3. It might be ABC, whatever you want. And it's sort of, is this a whole new product category that you're launching? Is it a new sub feature? Is it or a new sub product? Is it a feature? Is it a range of bug fixes? And so depending on the level, uh, the scale of the launch um, and, and the thing, you, the level of effort and the type of engagement changes. And being able to have that sort of framework in the language to say, this is like a really big one. We need to start collaborating 12 months ahead of launch, 18 months ahead, developing all the elements. Or no, as Emma said, it's sort of, you're already in the know on it all. And hey, there's a significant feature upgrade. Uh, it's a much later touch in terms of the effort involved and and, and so forth. So I, I think just having those that kind of framework in the language to think in that context could be super helpful. As far as a success story, so... And a wonderful, wonderful PMM partner years ago, um, Desmoda Medi. Uh, she moved on from Google to Meta, then to Spotify, and I think she just joined Salesforce. On the off chance anybody knows her, uh, she was wonderful. We were working at Google on interest-based ads, and the history prior to all of that was targeting context, understanding the context of the web page, and matching an ad to that context. We introduced the notion of the audience. And so uh, the user behind the computer, what are the people's interests, demographics, prior sites visited and tailoring that way. And so we had this opportunity to kind of reset the narrative and together sort of work through this idea that, you know, you want to reach your site visitors, then you want to reach people who look like them, and then you want to reach people who are just generally potentially interested in your space. And within your site visitors, there's also like the smaller kernel of those who created a shopping cart and abandoned and so on. And so thinking about these sort of concentric circles of audiences and how that relates to other elements and, you know, targeting, you're not targeting keywords, you're actually targeting people. It just so happens that the keywords represent the interests of the people. And so coming up with all this new narrative and language and framing and positioning, uh, she and I just spent hours together, putting it together, developing slides, visuals, worked with an outside agency to uh, make it visually stunning developed a variety of sort of speaking engagements and and so on. And so it's just a ton of fun, great partner. Just, we had a fun relationship and a good vibe and we're excited to do something together. And so it was just had great, great outcomes in the business, of course, uh, took off and eventually became many billions of dollars of uh, success. That's great. I love those happy stories where you look back and you're like, we really did a good job on that. Um, Daniel, do you have some uh, some uh, similar stories to share with us? Maybe um, even bringing in some glo global perspectives on how you've worked with local markets and how you've been able to deploy um, across the globe. N26 is adopted across different parts of the world. I'd love to hear your take. Yeah, no, sure. Um, I think th there is always a, a crucial um, matrix combination between PMM, the launch of the product, working with local markets, and how all this comes together. Um, and I think N26 operates mainly within the European region. As you know, there's so many different countries and so many different cultures. Um, and and to, to that extent, working with the local marketing teams um, is, is crucial. And so as what I was saying earlier on, when we kick off the work on a specific product, uh, the local marketing team 
is also brought on board. It's rare that we usually do big bangs in all of the markets, probably because of the complexity of the European landscape where this is totally different from a regulatory legal compliance perspective. And so it's probably it's easier from that that way. So we start off maybe with Germany and then we'll roll it out to Spain and we'll roll it out to France. But that gives us an opportunity to work one to one with the local market and the product team. And so even from a discovery perspective, it's fundamental because there might be some uh, things to keep in mind. I don't know, we're launching a savings account or we're launching equities that has different implications in terms of which regulatory bodies we need to go to, what kind of T's and C's from a legal perspective we need to take into consideration. And ultimately, also from how you position, how you you uh, you localize from, from a translation perspective. All of these aspects are really, really important. And so the working team gets bigger, but then the crucial aspect and the most difficult part is how do you then take that and you move on to the next market uh, and you can reuse what you have to scale or you have to change everything, right? So uh, these are important aspects of the PMM and sometimes there's overlap between the PMM and the marketing team, right? So in terms of positioning, storytelling, target audience, uh, who decides the marketing strategy in terms of which channels to use. Uh, and that is is difficult sometimes. But again, it's about how you work together and how you, because I think people get really uh, tight on what's on paper in theory versus what the practice is. Because when you go into the actual practice, there's so much work to do anyway that uh, it's just a matter of coordinating and making sure that we're looking at the north south of the company, right? And not not personal agenda. Yeah, you bring in a great perspective where uh, you're learning from each of these launches in different cultures, different languages, and you're bringing that learning to new markets. Um, we are almost out of time. I want to ask my last question to Irina. Uh, we talked a little bit about different uh, stakeholders. We brought in marketing, for example, in this case, and we've talked about some of the other stakeholders. Could you talk a little bit about um, the other stakeholders that the PM and PMM should collaborate with closely, and what's the best way to collaborate with them? Definitely. Yeah. I think uh, it's very important to hear the market's feedbacks, but it's also very important to work with your ops teams that can provide you even deeper understanding of what is happening, especially if something is not happening right. That would be the, your key partners to identify uh, the issue, jump on it and help to resolve as well as uh, data scientists to understand deeper the opportunity of your launch, understand uh, your results of the launch and deep dive and understand how you can improve. Um, as well as user experience researchers, and this is the partners with whom you can divide and conquer some of the research targets that you have in your roadmap and you can collaborate together. As well as product designers when it comes to designing some nice, uh, you know, a user experience and you know visual identity that would be i would say the core uh, cross-functional collaboration um, points for you absolutely um, well i want to thank all of our panelists today and i want to thank the audience for attending we've got some we covered some very interesting topics talked about from challenges to synergies to success stories of product marketing and product management i hope you all learned something today Thank you all for your time. We appreciate it. Have a great day.